Now what if I told you Mars had its own Grand Canyon, but instead of being the same size of ours here on Earth, instead it was as long as the continental United States is wide and almost as deep as Mount Everest is tall. So how exactly would this canyon be able to form on Mars, and would it be a good idea to send a crew to the surface to explore this new region? Let's talk about that. Now this canyon has the name Valles Marineris, which is named after the Mariner 9 spacecraft which discovered it in 1971 and 1972. Now Valles Marineris, the canyon itself, is 4,000 kilometers long, 200 kilometers wide, and around 7 kilometers deep in its deepest locations. If you compare this to the Grand Canyon here on Earth, it is about 5 times longer than the Grand Canyon, it is about 8 times wider, and 4 times deeper. So altogether, Valles Marineris is a massive scar on the surface of Mars. Now many people are familiar with how exactly the Grand Canyon is formed, mainly because it's pretty obvious. The Colorado River flows directly through it, and over the course of 5 to 6 million years, it would eventually erode that much to create such a canyon. However, when we look at Mars, it's not as obvious because we don't see flowing water flowing through it. So how exactly did this canyon form? And some of the first observations did expect that running water at one point did carve out this entire canyon. However, there are many different predictions to exactly how it formed. Some people think it could have been CO2 ice or carbon dioxide ice creating glaciers that eventually melted all the way through. Then again, people do believe that there could have been streams in the past or flowing water which carved out some of the outer valleys. But scientists believe there has to be something missing. If it's just glacial ice movement or water flowing through the surface, it wouldn't have made something this incredibly massive. So one of the most agreed upon theories has to do with a rift fault. And this is because Valles Marineris is very close to the Tharsis region in Mars. And I talk about the Tharsis region very briefly in the video on Olympus Mons and some of the volcanic activity that is happening on Mars. However, instead, Tharsis is just a very heavy component of the crust. Therefore, Valles Marineris is thought to be a rift fault, which is basically a crack between the typical region of Mars and the very heavy Tharsis region. Now if you look at this image of Valles Marineris, it's a great depiction of what exactly is going on. If you can imagine on the left or the west, where there are these massive volcanoes in this very heavy Tharsis region, and then on the right, which is an area called Chris Planitia, which is basically thought to be plains or relatively lightweight in terms of the crust. So it's not that far-fetched to envision how exactly Valles Marineris may have formed. If we go all the way back to when there's a lot more volcanic activity on the planet Mars, we could see the Tharsis region eventually building up and building up and building up until there was a crack in the surface between the heavier Tharsis region and the lighter surrounding area. Then, when it was much more stabilized and probably a lot cooler on the planet, liquid water was then present and would flow from the much higher elevations of the Tharsis region down to the plains in the east, which was actually thought to once have possibly been an ocean. Therefore, we have this gradual change over time, carving out Valles Marineris to what we now see or what we now know of today. So as you can probably imagine, if Valles Marineris was in fact formed with some form of running water, we should be able to find something that appears to be dried up riverbeds. And there actually are some locations in Valles Marineris that show this, one of which called Ayas Chasma, which is actually shown to show a lot of evidence towards the fact that running water once existed on the surface of Mars. But there also is something called Recurrent Slope Lineae, which is actually running water that's currently on Mars but not in the sense that you may think of. Instead of maybe a river or maybe even a creek, it's more of just very, very salty water in the regolith itself slowly going down a slope over time. Not necessarily as exciting as a full-blown riverbed, but rather just something showing that there actually is some liquid still on Mars, even though it's not in the sense or fresh water that we normally think of. So if we can imagine, ever since the very first orbiters we sent to Mars have taken really great images of Valles Marineris. So this leads to the question of why don't we just send a robotic mission down there and take a lot of samples? And the issue is mainly because this is a very challenging valley to navigate. I mean, if you think of the Grand Canyon, imagine trying to control maybe a remote control car around that region. One false step and you could just tumble all the way down. Or if you're at the bottom, having to be able to climb up such a very steep ridge would be very challenging. So then this leads to another point that NASA has made 
talking about weather balloons and being able to use those to traverse such a region. They'd be able to get much closer to the ground than an orbiter could, but they could also be able to traverse much further than a rover could. However, it might be difficult for them to land in certain locations, and also since a weather balloon has never been sent to Mars or successfully used, then that mainly means it probably won't happen in the next few decades. But you never know, it could be a new surprise. So then this leads to the question of would we be able to send crew to Valles Marineris to learn a lot of information about the geology and the past history of Mars? And in fact, it's thought this could be a great location for crew. Now, NASA has this thing called exploration zones. And here, they try and explore a lot of different regions of Mars to what would be good for an exploration sense, as well as a survivability sense if we were to send crew there. And Valles Marineris is actually one of the highest ranked ones. I talk more about it in this video, but overall, since there's a lot of information about the volcanic history and even possible running water history of Mars, Valles Marineris has a a lot of great aspects which would be good for a crewed mission. So it's thought that this could actually be the home of future astronauts. So with all that being said, I want to pose the question for you. Would you want to go to Valles Marineris if you were on a crew trip to Mars, or would you rather want to go somewhere else on the surface? Let me know in the comments below. But I want to say a big thank you to those that support me on Patreon and help every single one of these videos happen. But all together, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.